Hi everybody, welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. And today we're going to talk about the LDAP outage that happened last week and some ideas about how we could manage identity management. Um, so first let's talk about the LDAP outage. I mean, uh, I guess you see basically what happened. So two weeks ago, we had an issue with the Kubernetes cluster um, where we had to recreate everything from scratch. And we discovered that um, our LDAP database was not back up since uh, February. So the first step was to first restore the, um, the database. Then we realized that um, people were not recreated um, in the process. Uh, those accounts were available for someone else, which means that um, it was a big deal for, um, especially for plugin maintainers, um, for recent plugin maintainers. And so the first step, first step was to first recover um, every every account that was lost. So we first focus on maintainers. Then we use Jira and Artifactory database um, to restore those data. Um, and once all uh, user accounts were recreated, um, we we tried to reset every password. Um, while for maintainers it was quite easy, um, it's it was a, a, a totally well different uh, scenario for the whole database. Uh, the main reason to this is because we have a lot of accounts in our database. We also have a lot of garbage in the database, um, and sending one one hundred thousand email address in one day is not something easy, especially when uh, we usually uh, only send something like around five hundred per month. Um, so it, it was it was quite challenging, and this process also highlighted um, a few limitations with our account app, um, which is the application that we use to create, modify, uh, and delete um, accounts in our LDAP database. So now that um, we restore and we we are back to the previous situation, um, the idea is to to identify how we could prevent this to happen again in the future and. Um, yeah, what 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 would be what would be the, the different um, options? So last uh, yesterday we had uh, a discussion with the Linux Foundation where uh, Tracy and Alec uh, were also in discussion, and so the idea was to see with the Linux uh, Foundation infra team what would be the option if we could use uh, if we could delegate that responsibility of uh, of identity. To the, to the Linux Foundation instead of um, managing it by yourself, by yourself. Uh, and also in the discussion, they also remind us, I mean, not, maybe not remind us, but tell us that told us that we could also, they could also um, host um, our Jira instance uh, on the Linux Foundation. So basically everything, so we spend, we discussed for around one hour uh, about why we would use Linux Foundation identity management, um, what would be the limitation, and what would be the different services that we would move um, to, the, to the Linux Foundation. So so first, um, any question until now? Anyone, anyone, anybody want to add something on this? So yeah, so then I continue. Um, so regarding the identity management, um, yeah, someone raise Tracy. We can't hear you, Tracy. Okay, better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've just put in the chat um, the link to the document where I just want to capture um, everything with the identity management and the transition. So. Uh, it's work in progress, but I'll keep updating it with this conversation. And if folks want to go in and comment uh, or use that as just background um, to what we're trying to do. I just put a link to the chat in the, the notes. Thanks. Um, the thing is, at, the, at this moment, we are really open to um, multiple solutions. So either we totally move identity management to the Linux Foundation, um, or we find a way to remove the account app. Um, this morning, I was uh, playing a little bit with a cold, uh, with a tool called um, Key Cloaks. Um, Basically, it's a tool that seems to be quite easy to deploy uh, on, on a communities cluster. And so it can have user federation. So we could, for example, use it um, 
So we could, for example, reuse a DAP database and use Kickload to create user in the database, modify user, delete users. And what we can also use it for is to, for example, have it in front of the DAP database. So while we are migrating to a different solution, the Kickload could be the central piece um, for a while. Um, it seems to be supporting a lot of uh, feature like user can request an account, um, they can ask to reset the password, send an email, I mean, like all the features that you would expect from an identity management today. Um, but um, yeah, that that's one of the options. The other options would be to see um, if we really need it, because the main reason why we, we introduced that in the infrastructure was to, to use it with Jira. Um, but um, audio is really bad on my side, sorry. Is it the same for everybody? Yeah, sorry. Um, so yeah, yeah, we are we are really at the moment where we are trying to find identify all the different options. So I really encourage you to look at the notes and, and put some comments there. Yeah, it sounds like the, yeah. The sound seems okay for you, so I guess we can continue. Um, otherwise, we don't have. I mean, the, the, the main focus were on the account management um, stuff. Um, so if you don't want to ask any question, oh, I can just continue on the last topic that I want to, to talk today. Um, nothing else, nobody want to add anything on, on this? Well, so in terms of Linux Foundation as a potential ultimate, um, I assume that's a long horizon because there's an awful lot of work to transition 100,000 accounts to anything. Um, so, so the, the the first thing the first thing in the discussion was uh, why they can provide they can uh, provide the identity management. We would not have the control on it, so it would be a black box. So basically, uh, a user just created a Linux uh, account and a Linux Foundation account to to access Kubernetes project, to access any other project, and it would be the same for the for the for the Jenkins project. So one of the challenge here first will be to map the Jenkins account with the Linux Foundation because there is a really big probability that your username is already taken by someone else um, in the Linux Foundation. That's one of the thing. The other thing is uh, until today, Linux. Foundation always provided, uh, always used identity management for their own services. So they don't know at the moment um, how we would um, use those services. And it will not necessarily be easy to create groups and change groups member and stuff like this. Um, we don't think it's a big deal because we do not create, um, we don't regularly create groups, um, except at the default one to access Tira and um, maybe for, let's say, Artifactory, but otherwise, this is not something that regularly change. Um, but I do not expect it to be like a quick win where um, we just work on it three days and, and, it, and it's done, um, because ADAP is used in a lot of places. So the biggest ad challenge, I think, will be to see um, how we do for Jira. Um, so if they host Jira, then it's easy because we don't have to, to handle for, we don't have to care for the identity. We just use their identity and that's it. And they provide us the Jira. Um, if we don't want to use Jira anymore for some reason, yeah, maybe there is other options. Um, and also, they also have experience with their own identity management to manage um, um, Chief Rock, so the source, um, um, Artifactory. So this is also something that they already did in the past. So I mean, I don't. We 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 plan another meeting with them next Monday. Um, if you have any question, feel free to ask. Um, but uh, so we don't know yet at the moment what would be the um, uh, how many time. I mean, how many how many how much energy we have to put in this project. Yeah. So, uh, I I'm particularly interested in the Jira thing because if I understand correctly, we we need to confront a Jira upgrade within the next six or nine months, right? We've got we've got a Jira version that we need to update anyway, so good excuse to consider hosting that by Linux Foundation. Great. Thanks. Yeah, so, so that's definitely so the discussion with Jira, that's just a reminder. Um, so right now we have three options. Either we keep maintaining Jira by ourselves, and then we have to upgrade the database, we have to upgrade Jira, and so it will require from some work from us. 
either we move to Jira clouds, but there we have a bunch of limitation. Um, all the limitations that I identify are in Jira, um, you know, are Jira, so there is a ticket uh, with that. But the main issues is the number of people who can log in on Jira. We cannot use LDAP to authenticate on Jira Cloud, so you have to use Jira um, yeah. accounts. There are some limitations with the domain that you want to use for, you, for your accounts and, and stuff like this. So it's not necessarily trivial to move to Jira Cloud. And there also discussion about using GitHub issues. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of related. It's kind of linked um, all together. But um, yeah, from for all users, most of the accounts, except for maintainers, where it's way easier to maintain because the amount of maintainers is something like um, one thousand seven hundred user account, which is definitely easier to handle than the one hundred thousand uh, user account that you have in Adap. Um, but so, yeah, I think the discussion about the ticketing system um, needs to be considered for the, for the identity management. Yeah, on the JIRA side, I think I, I want to say, like, I'm in favor of, um, you know, aggressively getting rid of services that we shouldn't be managing and figuring out how to do that so we can kind of focus on, on the things Jenkins should do well. So on the JIRA side, um, like, it's... I think we can separate some of those discussions. We're already using GitHub issues and Jira Cloud. Um, I think we need to figure that out so it becomes clear to the community. Uh, that being said, I don't think Jira is going away anytime soon, not with the requirements for security. So I'd be keen to say, well, can we just move Jira to be hosted by Linux Foundation and um, pass on the, the login? as well and do that with a view to maybe getting it done by November. Yeah, there's been a recent discussion on the developers mailing list that some people really love Jira for their plugins. Uh, some people hate it. <laughs> so it, it's gonna be hard to get a consensus on one single tool. Um, but we, I think we can enable people to use both, but definitely moving the services outside of the Jenkins infrastructure management would be really nice. Um, I would be also in favor to move Jira to, to the Linux Foundation. Um, this was something that we discussed one year ago, and it was not clear at that time if we could do that. But apparently, um, it's something that the CDF can provide. So I would definitely uh, be interested to see if we can go down that path. Um, the other thing uh, I also think that you have to be clear is what are the priorities for the Jenkins Infra projects? And because right now we have the identity management that we have um, that, 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 that raise in terms of priority. We still have to finish the, the automation release project because we have a strong deadline about um, really being able to, to, to release uh, stable release and security release um, because once the security needs to happen for the stable release, we need to be able to, to provide security release as well. So automated release is still uh, on the path. Um, and so, yeah, this is something that we have to keep in mind. And just this was the last thing that I want to discuss, um, the automated, automated release. I'm just wondering, so last week we agreed um, that we would test the security process, uh, that, we, that, we, uh, that we would test the security process using the next weekly release next week. Um, I'm just wondering what's our, I mean, what's the current state with the Windows um, containers? Um, I don't know if uh, it's Alex or me, the blocker in this project, in this part. All right, for the release specifically, is that what you're asking? Yeah, I'm just asking for the packaging Windows, uh, the package Windows uh, artifacts. So we can uh, we can uh, use the default .NET 3.5 container as the build part. We don't have to build our own image for that, and then we can use the inbound agent, um, or what used to be called the JNLP agent. So I just don't know how to um, to set that up in the pod template. Yeah. But I can give you the image names um, to use if, if that's helpful. Yeah, if you can put that in the notes, um, and then I'll send you the PR with the change needed in order, in order to make this working. Okay. Um, so so you know where, what to change next time. Sounds good. That way we're using the official Microsoft 
uh, image. So it should include all security fixes and everything uh, going forward. Perfect. Oops. Um, I think we covered all the, the points that I had, so I think we are all good uh, for this meeting. So I called three times to see if you want to talk about something specific. That's the right moment, considering the amount of people in the, the video today. Well, so Olivier, do we do we plan a separate retrospective activity and a separate eventual retrospective meeting on the outage? How how would what's the vision there? So we definitely have to do a, a different retrospective um, retrospective regarding the outage. I just would like to to see before doing the retrospective to see what are the different what are the different options that we may have to solve here. Um, because we, we 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 had that meeting with the Linux Foundation yesterday, which was planned really late. I mean, I was I discovered it like one or two hours before it happened, and, and Tracy organized it um, in last minute. We have a second one next week on Monday, and then we'll, we'll know a little bit more about um, what 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 does it imply to move to the Linux Foundation for Identity Management, and how how many time uh, will it take to us to move it and stuff stuff like this. So I think it would make make sense to just delay the retrospective once we know a little bit more about what our options. Is it does it sound right to you? Yeah, I just want to be sure we go through it because the. There certainly there's plenty to be learned from the experience. I, th I think we have we have two retrospectives to do here. We have one regarding the Kubernetes cluster and what happens, and we have one regarding uh, the LDAP outage. Right. Yeah, that's fair because they're intermingled and yet two separate. You know, not having detected backups missing, etc., is is a big gap. Not having tested backups, yeah. How do you want to do like to... Yeah, I'm just wondering how would you prefer to do the retrospective? Uh, do we plan to do it next week during the Jenkins Infra meeting, or do we do it? Or we should we do it by document? What would be your preferred way? Well, for me, in the past, it's worked well to gather as much as we can into the document beforehand, and and let everyone in, who is interested contribute their their ideas and concepts into the document. So it's been deeply vetted before and then yeah i would love to hear it if we could be ready for next next info info meeting that would be great for me let's run this can i just add something yes uh i think would it and this is just a suggestion prior to doing a retrospective would it be and this may have been done and i just have not seen it would it be good to do some type of a like business disruption report and in that report we actually show a timeline of what happened i think that that would be good for a retrospective because if people know where the deficiencies were as they happened we can then make suggestions but that's i don't know if that's been done and if it hasn't it's just a suggestion i think well, that, I, I think I, a, a detailed timeline is in the document that oleg started yeah, our leg started for the LDAP outage, but I'm not so, sure that it also covered the Kubernetes part. Yeah, but, but good idea, Mark, and, and absolutely we should. The, the timeline is, is a crucial part of the retrospective. Thank you. The reason that I used that suggestion is because as I'm sort of thinking from the Kubernetes cluster perspective, how we may better things, I have ideas, but I don't know exactly how the timeline went. I was a piece of a part of it, but I don't know the full scope of everything. Okay, I'll do this. Okay, I can, I can, I can do this. Okay, I think we are good. So, any, any last topic? One time, two time. 
for your time. Thanks for your time. Have a great day and see you on RC. Bye-bye. Have a good one, everybody.